Hi everyone. So in today's video, I am going to be talking about project positions in a lot of detail. What are your chances of getting a seat in a project? And many of you might be curious as to what exactly is a project position and what are its advantages. So I have divided this video into different segments. So depending upon what your understanding is about research positions or project positions, you can skip to the relevant part of the video. If I talk about project positions, what exactly are they? So basically, let's say there is a supervisor or a principal investigator, which is commonly called as a PI. They apply to projects. So these are basically scientists or professors uh, in CSR institutes, in DRDO, or, you know, base various national institutes or universities, uh, be it state universities or national universities, and they apply for re research projects, right? They apply for funding from the government. So when they apply for the funding, there's a significant amount of money that has been reserved for the workforce. And uh, that cannot be spent on any other aspect of the funding or the project. So when, let's say, a principal investigator or, like I said, a PI gets, gets this funding from the government, then they have to recruit uh, candidates or uh, people who will be working in that project. For project assistance, it's the same as PhD, uh, like the CSIR funding, right? So it can range from 25000 to 40000 depending upon uh, the HRA and in which city you are and also whether you have qualified net or gate so if you have qualified net or gate the stipend would be higher if you have not qualified net or gate the stipend might be lower right but it is in the range of 25000 to 40000 in general it varies from project to project like i said it depends on the city so what are the advantages why would someone actually consider a project position so it has several very key advantages um, the first one is that you get exposure to a research lab. So let's say you are fresh after MSc, you do not have a, you do not have a research project and you really want to understand your interest and whether you are actually made for the laboratory or not, whether you're made for experimentation or not, because theoretically and practically things are very different when it comes in, when it comes to any field of science for that matter. So uh, let's say if you want to experience a particular field and see whether it is uh, good for you and then decide that is one aspect sometimes people are looking to go abroad okay to do their phd abroad and before that you need some research experience so someone goes for these positions or applies for these positions to get some research exposure so that they can uh, you know make their cv strong and then uh, apply for positions abroad that is one key advantage um, then the third kind of people is someone who's looking to get it, who's looking to get into psus so this project position is generally considered as um, as a, a experience, okay, a experience in, in the terms that let's say certain uh, PSUs or public sector undertakings um, like IOCL, for example, uh, they let's say require two years of experience or there might be some position in some uh, other, uh, you know, government backed uh, company wherein you need some prior research experience before you can apply for that position. So let's say you need a GATE score, but apart from that, you need some prior work experience or research experience. So uh, let's say if you want to get into IOCL, then you might be required, you might be needing two years of research experience in the petroleum industry. And uh, one more thing is that let's say you do not have, you haven't qualified net or GATE. Um, so you, there are certain project positions which do not require net or GATE qualification. So what you could do is you could enroll in it and uh, at the, and at the same time prepare for the gate or the net exam and as soon as you prepare for as soon as you qualify this uh, you know this net or gate examination then you can enroll yourself for phd so your there's no gap as such in your cv or you have not wasted any time because uh, uh, you had begun your uh, project and in most cases this project gets converted into a phd like so you do not lose out on time I hope you, you are getting what I'm trying to convey. And lastly, it is also important to gauge your supervisor. So for example, let's say you're not very confident uh, that, you know, you might have heard instances where, I, where the PIs or the supervisors are not very friendly or the environment of the lab is very toxic. So before you actually go ahead and join that lab, you would want to work in that lab and see how well you gel along and how the environment of the lab is. So then also project positions or uh, these research positions are very very important because you do not have any sort of a contract i mean if you do not like the environment you can leave anytime whereas if you enroll for a phd more or less you are kind of like you know stuck and uh, if you have to leave that institute then you'll have to start from scratch in another institute you cannot work on the same project so that is a big issue when it comes to um you know choosing labs that might be toxic so this gives you a prior experience of how your phd is going to be so that is also one advantage 
of you know enrolling for a project position but again these are certain advantages or certain reasons why people uh, prefer project positions uh, sometimes see now i have done my phd and i have a couple of years of experience i have one one plus years of experience in the industry and then now i i have been working as a senior scientist and a postdoc for past about 10 to 12 months so um i have seen things from the other side as well okay are from the other side in the sense that uh, how the uh, you know grfs junior research fellows sometimes they are also called grfs i'm very sorry i forgot that so how these grfs and how these projects uh, students are hired okay so there are three ways that they are hired okay three ways in the sense that either the pi directly knows them so let's say it's and it's it's nothing wrong it's something that is very uh, very natural if you think about it so let's say if i am a pi okay and i apply for a uh, uh, for a grant or for funding and i get that funding and there is this very bright student who has uh, who i have taught in msc right so my first priority will always be to ask that particular student whether he would be wanting to um to basically uh, you know work in the in, in in our laboratory right so that would be my first choice and then if he or she is not interested then i would look for other options then what is my other option let's say if in my lab there are phd's and postdocs so i'm going to go and ask them that uh, if they have any candidate any bright candidate in mind who would want to work in our laboratory okay so that would be my second uh, kind of um, preference because if you think about it like i don't want some student to come for 6 months take some research experience and then you know push off abroad because if i look from a personal perspective then i would want someone who sticks around and works in the project throughout because you know i would be uh, or the lab in i would say would be investing a lot of time in training them right so we would not want someone who who comes for 6 7 months gets the experience and then pushes off abroad or who is not very serious about research we would want someone who is serious so when when it comes from referrals or when it comes from recommendations from someone you already know you trust them more right but i think there is a government mandate again i'm not very sure about it but i think there is a government mandate that you have to advertise the position that's why sometimes you will see the advertisement of a particular position but then you would not have a fair chance actually to get into that position because already you know pi's would have certain recommendations either their personal recommendations or recommendations from the phd's or postdocs but the, if if there's a new lab okay uh let's say a very new lab uh, which has been uh, granted a funding uh, in the last one or two years i mean someone who just became an assistant professor let's say or just became a scientist and uh, they are just setting up the laboratory they might not have so many contacts so when they advertise a position there is a fair chance that uh, you know you might get an opportunity because they would not have any such great recommendations or reference they still might have through their colleagues or through their peers but there are chances are that you still might get a position but the best way to actually get a research position is uh, or this project assistant position is when csi labs or uh, icers or um, you know drdo let's say uh, have these uh, recruitments of 7 to 8 candidates okay so let's say there is a opportunity of project re- recruitment for 7 or 8 candidates let's say in a csi institute there the opportunity is the highest because let's say even they even if they have recommendations for at max it would be let's say for two or three students but not more than that so there you have a very fair chance that you know you might be given an opportunity for the interview and you can impress the um, pi's and you know get a project position for yourself so i am not trying to uh, downplay that you might not get a position in in a in in a project where the professor is well known or if he is a associate professor or he has prior experience so you should apply for each and every position but i am just trying to give you an idea that you know let's say your if your cv is very strong and still you're not getting an opportunity that might be the reason so you should not take it personally um so yeah do apply for the csi positions you should definitely apply for this mega recruitments that i would say where at least three or four candidates are getting selected that is one and you should apply in general also but make sure that mo- now thankfully most of the interviews happen um online so i mean there is no harm in applying for these positions and even if you are not getting selected at least you have this exposure to giving interviews 
so anyway i hope you found this video helpful if you did uh, do like this video and share it with your juniors seniors or your colleagues and uh, lastly if you have any sort of doubts or if you want to ask something very specific do leave the leave, do leave a comment down in the uh, comment section and i will try my best to respond to it thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video